presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are St. Louis. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. Atlanta, Georgia is the scene. And tonight on Fox Sports Midwest, game number three between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Atlanta Braves. Highly entertaining series so far. And in game number one on Monday night, it was Trevor Rosenthal closing the door and picking up a win for St. Louis. On the other side, a flamethrower at the back end of the games for the Atlanta Braves. Craig Kimbrell, one of the best in the business. The closer came in, shut the door on Alan Craig and the Cardinals in game number two. Look at the numbers in this series from Turner Field. Two teams evenly matched going into game number three. And welcome to Cardinals Baseball. That's the Mad Hungarian Al Roboski. My name is Dan McLaughlin. And a good pitching matchup here for game number three. Mike Miner, the lefty. Adam Wainwright, the right-hander for St. Louis. Well, Mike Miner's making his only his second start of the year. He had some shoulder problems in spring. And he's another tough left-hander. The Cardinals only hitting 199 against Southpaws. Adam Wainwright trying to reverse the trend. His only bad start of the year was in Chicago last Friday, and he's a 7-2 and two lifetime against the Braves. So let's look for the Cardinals a victory tonight. It's the Georgia native and former Brave farm man. Now with the Cardinals, one of the best trades they've ever made. Adam Wainwright going for St. Louis tonight. fan you could find that's Adam Wainwright who gets the call tonight the BJC healthcare difference maker against the Cubs he has struggled everybody else great success he'll go tonight for St. Louis a look at the central next
Paul Goldschmidt, their big slugger, who leads the National League in hits, takes one deep. Arizona would win it by the score of 3-2. to two. Bronson Arroyo picked up the victory. And with a win tonight for St. Louis, the Cardinals could pull to within four of the Milwaukee Brewers. In the Central, all the teams have something they need to improve upon. The Brewers have given up a ton of home runs. The Cardinals searching for offense. The Reds looking for bullpen help. They'll get that with Chapman this weekend. We'll see the Pittsburgh Pirates on Friday night. Their starters have struggled. The Cubs looking for offense as well. We're at Turner Field in Atlanta. The rubber game. It's the Atlanta Braves and the St. Louis Cardinals coming up on Fox Sports Midwest. Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser. Designate a driver and enjoy the great times. It's Chevy Truck Month. Visit your Mid-America Chevy dealers to take advantage of Truck Month offers on the all-new Chevy Silverado. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Statue of Phil Negro. You can see the knuckleball grip that he had there. As Mike Matheny is searching for offense with his lineup and searching for a series win here tonight. The Cardinals are 17 and 17. Four and a half games back in Milwaukee, who lost earlier today. The Atlanta Braves, 18 and 14. And the Braves in the National East Division tied right now with Miami, who won earlier this afternoon. The Cardinals lineup Carpenter, Molina, Holiday, Adams, Peralta, Richick. Borges, Ellis, and Adam Wainwright off to a fantastic start with the bat. Six for 16, a double, and a pair of RBIs. Cardinals face a 26-year-old left-hander, Mike Miner, and he can be awfully tough. Well, he really has been the last couple times he's faced the Cardinals. He's 2-0 in his career against them with an ERA under one. You see, he's only made one start this year, and that was May the 2nd. He had some abdominal surgery, and then it came back too soon, and aggravated his shoulder and so just as precautionary they had him sit out for most of spring training did not make an appearance in spring and just starting to make his pitches here his second start at the big league level Freddie Gonzalez a look at his defense tonight around the horn presented by Dobbs Upton and Upton the brothers in left and center then it's Jason Hayward in right Chris Johnson at third Andrelton Simmons at short Pena, big day in game one. He's at second base. Freddie Freeman at first. Evan Gaddis is behind the plate. And Mike Miner is on the mound. Well, the Cardinals are facing a lefty here tonight. 
And so far this season they are two and five against left handed pitching and only hitting 199 as a team. You know Mike would love to change that here this evening. A look at the umpires Todd Titchener is calling the balls and strikes. Gabe Morales is at first Tim Timmons at second and the crew chief Tim Welke down at third. Beautiful night for baseball here in Atlanta Georgia. And away we go and the first pitch is taken for a ball by Matt Carpenter. Carpenter is hitting 273. One home run he's driven in 12 and three hits in this series. Two and oh. Trying to look for offense with the left hand on the mound. They're sitting Alan Craig out who is their best hitter against left handed pitching. But that's just an indication how they feel his timing is off. And there's a strike to Carpenter more on that with Jim Hayes and uh, later in our telecast. What's the pitch to watch out for when you're facing Mike Miner. Well the one thing he in his one start he gave up two solo home runs in that beating. He felt like his off speed pitches were not sharp. They were out over the plate and he got hurt by them. When he first came up the Cardinals hit him very well and he came out of the 2009 draft class seventh overall. He is from Vanderbilt University. There's been some good major league players current players that have come from Vanderbilt Nick Christiani of Cincinnati Sonny Gray of Oakland and most notable player arguably would be David Price and those are the pitchers that yeah. have come from Vanderbilt all pitchers Pedro Alvarez played there as well we'll see him on Friday night and for Matt Carpenter that's his 23rd walk of the season he came in fifth best in the National League in terms of walks and here's some of the names from that 09 draft and great pitching with Strasburg who went today for Washington that was against the Dodgers Zach Wheeler Mike Miner Leak who made the jump straight from Arizona State to the big leagues and from high school Shelby Miller the Cardinals pick. There's Yadier Molina who's batting 320. And I think the walk is significant and it's not something new for Matt Carpenter. But the Cardinals as a team need to really get on base no matter what they either walks hits let the ball hit them somehow they got to start manufacturing some runs. I wonder if um, Mike Matheny would use more hit and runs here Mike. potentially certainly could think about that with Yadier Molina so good at going to the right side but following up on your theme of just trying to generate some offense here. No doubt about it. You know we talked about they're struggling as a team scoring runs. One thing the manager can do to kind of jump start the offense. Off speed pitch taken low, one ball, one strike. What are your thoughts on Molina batting second, which is a position we haven't seen him at all that much, but this week in this trip we have? Well, I think it's kind of the combination where Mike Matheny's trying to bunch three or four of his hot hitters and put them together. And Yachty. Shoots it out to left. Upton is over and he makes the catch. What a play. Justin Upton in left field and back to the bag at first. Goes Matt Carpenter. So Molina robbed by Justin Upton. They have a very good outfield here. All have good throwing arms. They all have tremendous speed. And there he gets into the corner. And Justin Upton, one of the five tool players. A lot of excitement, but boy. You can get down on him with all the strikeouts. But he was a difference maker in yesterday's ball game. We took that change up. The only mistake, really, that Lions made. And here is Matt Holliday, who's hit the Braves very well in his career. 61 games and an average of 331. Found it interesting that Mike Matheny wanted to double switch last night, and in doing so, took Holiday out of the game and he's the one guy that's been swinging the bat pretty well. He didn't make any sense to us. You know Holiday yes he made the final out but uh, the way that game was going you could have just left the same outfield intact and then pinch it for the pitcher in the ninth spot. He was six batters away either way neither one of them came up the ninth pitcher spot or Holiday's. Nothing into the count. Here on Holiday. Overall right around that 300 mark pair of home runs he's driven in 19 tops on the club. Mike Miner is a guy that uh, 
not afraid to pitch inside to right handed batters. He's got that curveball. A lot of times he'll use that to get ahead. To throw the fastball and he has given up home runs in the past. And a strikeout of Holiday looking for something else. Caught looking. Let's turn to Al's Toyota keys to the game. Well, you just want Wayno to go back and be himself. He was the premier baseball pitcher in the National League before he had this last trouble. And really, if you take away the two starts against the the Cubs, he's got an ERA of 0.47. And now we've got to manufacture some runs. We're having trouble scoring runs, so we haven't seen any hit and runs. We haven't seen any stolen bases. Whatever you can do, kind of jumpstart things. What we are seeing is what Holiday did, and rare to see Holiday. But how many times do you see hitters today take fastball strikes right down the middle? As we saw with Upton in game one and Holiday moments ago. Here's Matt Adams, who's seventh in the league in hitting at 325. No balls and two strikes. How about Troy Tulowitzki, the shortstop of the Rockies, leading all of baseball, hitting 421. 421 for Troy Tulowitzki. Well, his name has been rumored around a long time. Uh, before we got Peralta, a lot of people are saying we'd love to have Tulowitzki. And yeah, you'd love to have him when he's healthy. He's that kind of player. And that's the key with him. Can he stay healthy? One and two the count. Here on Matt Adams. Cardinals need to get that big hit at some point in time in games. They had a chance, even though they won game one, to bust it open, couldn't do it. And it just seems like it's a very tight lineup right now. Not getting that big hit, and it's a matter of just trying to take a deep breath and stepping back and realizing this is a good team and seeing if some of these hitters can hit to their potential. Well, that's it. I'm, I'm, I know people are probably getting tired to say well, it's just a matter of time. And it is a matter of time. It's too much of a track record here, but it's apparent they need to score runs to win. Pitching has been very good, and you know what? The Braves are saying exactly what we're saying right now. Absolutely. These two teams, the Braves are number one, the Cardinals number two in ERA. The starters have been outstanding. And the hitting just hasn't been there. The 2 2 is strikeout of Adams. And Miner strikes out two. Holiday and Adams both looking to hand the top of the first. Game three of this three game series. It's Hayward to lead it off. Followed by Upton, then Freeman, Evan Gaddis, Chris Johnson, then BJ Upton, Simmons, Minor, the pitcher batting eighth again, and Romero Pena, the switch hitter in the second baseman. Good numbers for Chris Johnson, six for 18, a triple and an RBI against Adam Wainwright.
And now it's Jason Hayward to lead it off, and the first pitch is taken for a ball. Well, last time out, Wainwright Friday against Chicago struggle. First time we've seen that this year. And his numbers presented by Kia. One ball, one strike. Well, this is Adams' eighth start of the year, and if it one out of every eight goes sour, I think we could live with that. But his tenth career against the Braves, he's seven and two with a 2.80 ERA against the Braves. Good pitch, and on the hands, just you love to be able to throw that ball to a left-hand hitter right above the hands, locking them up. You can really see where Wainwright. At Wrigley Field, which he had never lost prior to that start on Friday, now six and one in his career, was just fighting it all day, couldn't get a good release point, and there's a strikeout of Hayward to start the evening. And strikeout number 291 for the Atlanta Braves to lead the National League this season. Cardinals defense presented by Dobbs as we go around the horn. Holiday, Borges, and Gritchick in the outfield. Carpenter, Peralta, Ellis, and Adams along the infield. And Yadier Molina is behind the plate. Justin Upton, speaking of strikeouts, 40 plus already this year, but he does have nine home runs. And that's second best in the National League behind John Carlos Stanton. Stanton with 10 for the Miami Marlins. And Upton has been very good here at home, hitting close to 400. There's a curveball and a beauty in there for a strike, nothing at two. There was a determined look about Adam Wainwright down in the clubhouse today and visiting with some of the players. Everybody just kind of leaving him alone. He was studying video, very frustrated with his previous start. He said nothing was working in that game in Chicago, but you can tell right now he is focused. He's got uh, a good release point, and his mind is right where it needs to be. He can have a lot of fun on those days that he doesn't pitch, but when he pitches, it's all business. Here's the 0-2. Ooh, just missed. Upton with 45 strikeouts, and he's averaging a strikeout every 2.9 at bats this year. He said he's fourth in National League in home batting average, 383, nine home runs. And he lifts it out to deep left field, going back over his head. It's uh, going to be a double, it looks like here. Is Upton with his speed in safely at second base. A ball hit at Holiday, hits sharply. Looked like he didn't get a very good read on it, and it's a one-out double. That was a hanging breaking ball. Watch the curveball here, and you see they wanted it away. It stays on the inner half. He gets a stroke over it over the head of Holiday, and this guy will strike out a ton, but boy, you make a mistake, he'll make you pay. Pitch he hit last night was a changeup that right at the bottom of the strike zone in the middle of the plate, and he hit it better than 450 feet. Now Freddie Freeman, he's hitting 301. By the way, that was the first hit, 14 plate appearances for Justin Upton against Wainwright. Shift on here for Freeman. Very dangerous man in the middle of their lineup. Three hits in this series. He possesses power as well. Six homers, he's driven in 18. The Braves dropped seven straight. The numbers with runners in scoring position as far as average was around 100 for this lineup. Two and one. Evan Gaddis, their catcher, is their cleanup man. He's on deck. A lot of home runs in their lineup. As you mentioned, a lot of strikeouts on top of it. Fourth in the league in home runs. Fourth from the bottom in average. There's the curveball, and it drops in for a strike. Freeman didn't like it. He was froze by it, so the only thing he could do is complain, but he couldn't pull the trigger on that one. 
Lowest average with runners in scoring position. Atlanta at 201 this year. Complaining about the same thing a year ago. And Freeman skies one into center field. Peter Borges is there tonight. Backs up. Gets in a position to throw. And tagging up. Upped in from second to third. I still like the fact, though, that Borges puts himself in a position to get back. Momentum coming forward to make that throw. That's what you have to do. And fundamentally, that's the technique. Upton with his speed, he's going to advance either way. Ball deep enough. And I just bring that up because so many times you'll see this day and age a player knowing that Upton is going to tag up, casually make the catch, lob it back in. You know, just little things that well, fundamentally sound baseball. Well, they don't want to show you that they don't have a throwing arm. So Good they point. let the guy go and then they just lob it back in. Now it's Evan Gaddis. He's a big man, does not wear the batting gloves, takes a big, big swing. Quick hands, quick bat. Two outs and a runner at third. He's hitting 267 with seven home runs, 15 RBIs. Somewhat of a modern day legend. Last year, is, he was a pretty good high school player. And uh, then he gave up baseball for a while, kind of took a tour around the country. Had a bunch of odd jobs and really kind of lost himself there for a while and came back and wanted to play. And a high fly ball lifted out to left. Matt Holiday backs up a step or two and makes the catch. Ball carrying during batting practice and it's carrying here in the game. in a lefty on the mound and Mike Miner Al alluded to it earlier in the telecast no Alan Craig in this lineup and he's hit lefties okay this year and with more on that let's check in with Jim Hayes Jimmy yeah when you're not right you're not right that's what Mike Matheny told me a little while ago about Alan Craig sitting against a left-handed starter tonight he said Craig's timing is just a little off and he wanted to give Alan a day to not do anything he thinks Alan may be thinking too much about his struggles. Mike says he remains confident, Dan, that Craig will hit. They're just trying to find a way to get him going. Now, Johnny Peralta will dig in for the first time. And Jimmy, you're around the players day in and day out. How about the mindset of Alan Craig right now? It's you know, about five, six weeks into this regular season and uh, still has not gotten traction with that swing. Well, his teammates are confident that he will hit because he always has. Mike Matheny said he didn't want Allen to do anything, not think about it, but I saw Allen watching video for a long time today. So obviously, he's trying to do everything he can, Dan, to uh, somehow get himself on track. 
0-2 here on Peralta with Grichik to follow, then Peter Borges, the two former Angels. Jim Hayes with us down on the field. And there's a strikeout of Peralta, three in a row for Mike Miner. What can they do? What what else are they trying to do with him, Jimmy, to get him back on track as we'll take a look here at the strikeout of Peralta? Well, I mean, he's been doing everything that you can do, Dan, and tonight Mike wanted to change it up. Give him a night off, even though it's a left-handed uh, pitcher. Mike's saying not the most opportune time, but they felt very strongly that uh, he might have been thinking about it too much. So they give him a night off. Don't think about it. Don't do anything. But as I mentioned, he did sneak into the video room and uh, was trying to watch some video. There's Randall Grichik. And, and really, that was probably the most forthcoming comments from Mike Matheny about uh, a player that's having a, you know, an issue right now, whether it be in the field or at the plate. As Grichik takes a ball down and in, one and one. But, you know, Mike usually is one to say, well, he'll get it. But this way, in, in what you're saying, he said, well, right now, he just doesn't have it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious that uh, there is something going on. It's such a rarity that Alan Craig sits against, against a, a left-handed pitcher, Dan. I mean, he almost is always in there. So for him on this night to not be in there tells you that Mike saw something and wanted to take some sort of action. All right, Jimmy, thanks. And it's two and two on Gritchick. And these guys continue to take fastballs. But, you know, the one thing about Alan Craig, and this applies to all the Cardinals, if they're guilty of anything, they're guilty of trying too hard and working too hard. And I think the point that you're following up, Al, is uh, with Jim, is that, yeah, you could try to work on it in the cage, watch video, but in particular with cage work if if your timing's off and there is a flaw in your swing sometimes you're accentuating that flaw instead of staying away tough play here look what I found Chris Johnson nicely done and Grichik is retired for the second out on the run remind you Cardinals score six you'll get any size coffee fountain or frozen drink just 50 cents the next day at on the run yeah, exactly right. You know, we always talk about muscle memory, but when you're trying to uh, repeat the same thing and it's it's flawed, you're you're teaching yourself, you know, uh, bad bad habits. So, I think what Mike's thinking. And Peter Borges jumps on this pitch into deep left center field, and that will be his first home run as a Cardinal. Peter Borges, third hit in this series. And the Cardinals behind that home run, they lead it one to nothing here in the second inning. And like Mike Miner's first start, he gave up two solo shots and he lost that ball game. Peter Borges follows up the two for four performance on Monday night with a first national league home run, and that's got to feel pretty good right now. And Mike's also thinking if you give Alan Craig the day off today. Then you got the off day tomorrow, and you really come back fresh and ready to play and take off. Here's Mark Ellis. As he pulls it foul. Boy, is that nice to see Peter Borges out. It is, and there you see the fastball. Mike Miner will give up some home runs because he likes to throw inside the right-handed batters, and if you don't get it far enough in, you're going to give up some long balls. You know, Borges said we haven't seen it. Even with the low averages that he's had at times in the minor leagues or even in the American League, he has had pop in his bat. So it's not foreign to him to hit a home run. And I think we talk so much about his speed, but there is some pop in that bat. I even heard uh, Albert Pujols in an interview this winter talking about Peter Borges and said that he could hit 20 to 25 home runs. Now, I'm not sure we've seen that yet, but that's a big authority making that statement. Two and two on Ellis. Since Colton Wong was sent down, the Cardinals' second baseman, whether it be Ellis or Descalso, are hitting just 183. So they need some production from this spot as Ellis fouls it back. And if you're wondering about Colton Wong, he's hitting 333 since he was sent down. Two things. You know, Mark Ellis, I think now you can start fairly in evaluating him. He was hurt a lot of spring training. Starts the season on the disabled list. And a fly ball to center. 
You know, he only made one uh, rehab start, so he has spring training the last couple weeks. Peter Borges wasn't playing much, got a couple of hits in game one, and a home run in game three, and a lead for St. Louis. that Adam Wainwright faced his former team and he was nasty. It was in St. Louis. Wayno went the distance. We've said that an awful lot in his Cardinals career. And for the Braves he's the one that has gotten away. Nine innings the six hits back in late August of 2013. Last time he pitched against Atlanta here he was matched up against Mike Miner. Cutter taken low by Chris Johnson, who drove in the game winning run for the Braves last night. Eighth inning single against Pat Neshek. 2 1 win. In that start, Adam pitched well. In seven innings, gave up three earned runs, but uh, Miner was even better. He went seven innings and gave up one earned run. You know, Nishek has just been so good in particular against right handed batters one hit in their last 24 against him. Struck out 12. Lack of offense for both these teams two runs last night as Johnson hits it into right center that ball is tailing and Borges makes the catch. Out of Glen Academy in Brunswick Georgia. What a trade it has been for St. Louis as Wainwright still going. Cardinals picked up Ray King out of baseball. Marquis listed as a free agent, not with it anybody. J.D. Drew is retired. Eli Marrero is in coaching. Atlanta got him for a year, and then he signed a deal with the Dodgers. Speaking uh -huh. of J.D. Drew. You know, I remember when that trade was made, you know, the, the Braves needed offense, so they needed the two offensive players, J.D. Drew and and Morero. Cardinals need a lot more. They got Adam Minor League pitcher. Ray King was a specialist out of the bullpen. Here's a ground ball slowly hit towards third. Loved by Carpenter. He makes the play for the second out. And Marquis was in that rotation for quite a few years. But I remember talking with John Gerholtz. And I said, well, that's a, that's a trade that's going to benefit both clubs. And he said, well, I agree with you, but we'll see if I can sign J.D. Drew. And because he did not sign him, then it became such a lopsided deal. But at the time, you know, it was a trade that was going to benefit both ball clubs. But obviously, this is one that's going to go down in Cardinal history as one of the best trades ever. 29th overall pick by Atlanta. That was in 2000. And by 2001, he was named the number two overall prospect in all of baseball by Baseball America. 
Number two pitching prospect. Number one in the Braves organization. He had great minor league numbers and Wainwright has told me. He said if I didn't get traded though to St. Louis my career was starting to stall. He said I became not complacent but I needed to start thinking outside the box and how to get better. And sometimes a change of scenery can help you do that. Well, and he said that the, the Cardinals minor leaguers and the coaching staff really emphasized the sinker the curveball his change up you know improving those always had a very good fastball. Seemed like they had some pretty good starters in Atlanta at the time that kind of blocked him from his progression up the, the Atlanta ladder. However, you knew if you projected out, they were getting older. You're talking about a Hall of Famer and Tom Glavin, who eventually signed with the Mets to move on. It was the cutter and a check swing, and he went. There's Tom Glavin, who will go in with Greg Maddox and Bobby Cox in terms of the Braves contingents at uh, Cooperstown in a couple of months. I remember John Smoltz saying, though, that he was one that was very upset that they lost Adam Wainwright. Thought that they were making a real mistake giving up this guy because of his bright future. Two outs, nobody on, and a 3 2 pitch to Simmons. Just missed in a walk. The walks have been up this year for Wainwright. He didn't like the call, he thought he had strike three. Well, it's time now for you to tweet your photo using the hashtag STL Fan Photo. Chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast, and it's brought to you by AT&T. So two-out walk, the first issued by Adam Wainwright, and it brings in Mike Miner, the pitcher, batting eight. See a left-hander batting right-handed. Makes you think of Garcia. Jaime, who in his first rehab start was hit by a pitch on he's a left handed batter but it was on his back his pitching elbow the back elbow. I said well how does he get hit there and and they said that the pitch was up towards his head and he just reacted. He got his elbow up there and he was hit but hopefully that that's not still recovering very well from that. Matt Adams you can see there in the background and the runner that's Simmons both fighting the sun very tough on a right fielder and right now very tough on the first baseman the curveball misses low and away one and two the count don't see that in many stadiums but it brings to mind in Colorado you know, times of, of the day that that first baseman is really battling the sun and before it goes down. And I think back at uh, Bush Stadium, you get towards the middle of the summer, early starts, the 6:15 starts. How tough that sun is in right field. Here's a one-two. Slowly hit up the third base line. That is a fair ball and out at first. Nice play by Matt Carpenter on the move, charging that baseball and just getting Mike Miner. On the chalk to first.
Sports Midwest is brought to you by AT&T. Watch live TV on your device virtually anywhere with AT&T U-verse, mobilizing your world. By Schnucks, your neighborhood hometown grocer for 75 years. And find a helpful servicing steel dealer near you. Visit steeldealers.com. You can see on the stretch by Adams. Very tough for him to even stretch, it looked like, because of the sun. Didn't want to move and then lose sight of the baseball. And good judgment from Matt Carpenter to pick up that ball. So it was on the chalk line. If he would have let it go, it would have been a base hit. So he got the pitcher, threw him out. And now it's Wainwright. He hits it out to deep left field. Up in his back, over his head, and off the wall. Wainwright is now 7 for 17 this year. Adam Wainwright has a few goals. One is he wants to get his first silver slugger. I'm sure he wants to get his third gold glove. He also wants to get his first side young. He's well on his way to the silver slugger the way he's swinging the bat. He's such a good athlete. And I think everything he's in a real happy place. He loves the way he's pitching right now. Feels like he can dominate a ball game. And now he can really concentrate somewhat on that hitting, too. And there could be a few pitchers early in the season here going to go, oh, he's a pitcher. Not showing the respect that he probably uh, is due. Here's Matt Carpenter. Drops down a bunt. Wainwright better hurry. Ooh, they may have had a play. And Carpenter is safe at first. The hesitation by Miner. Carpenter, you know he's always hustling. And it's runners at the corners and nobody out. Usually your catcher's the ones going to instruct the pitcher where to throw the ball. And Mike Miner, you know, he's thinking in his case that he could get the lead runner. He can throw out Wainwright at third base. So he looks there and then assumes, okay, I can just lollipop it over to first base. But as you said, Matt Carpenter hustling all the way. He beats it out. Now it brings in Molina. He's behind Holiday in terms of average with runners in scoring position. Holiday is at 412, which is third best in the National League. He's on deck. So base hit for Carpenter. And here comes a 1 0 to Yadier Molina. Ground ball left side. This could be two out at second. They'll turn the double play. The run scores. That's Wainwright, and it's one to nothing, St. Louis. Well, we'll trade that for another run right now, but let's go back to the bunt and just see if Mike Miner had the option to throw to his third baseman cover. I didn't think so there was any He starts to come kick. in, and then he gets there. I, I agree. You know, he had plenty of time. If he gets it there, he could take two more steps back by the time that uh, Wainwright has to go 40 feet. So if he wanted to go to third, he could have done that. But you do have to get a sure out, and he didn't get that either. Here's Holiday, who is called out on strikes. Looking at a fastball back in the first inning. It's another fastball, and that's ball one. Holiday hits it off the end of the bat into shallow left center and that drops in for a base hit. So Matt Holiday is one for two. DJ e. Upton might have gotten fooled a little bit respecting the power of Holiday. But it just sounded like it didn't sound that crisp sound to it. Probably hit right off the end of the bat and he didn't really react and come in charging hard knowing that ball wouldn't carry. Brings in Adams. And he looks at strike one. Nothing in two. Matt Adams among the league leaders against right-handed pitching. Had his issues against lefties. 
130 and 365 against the righties. There's a line shot and a fair ball down into the corner. Holiday on his way to third and held up. It'll be a chance for Johnny Peralta. Good to see that. A double off the lefty for Matt Adams. You saw he had a 130 bang average and he hits this ball with authority. Minor was really ticked off and I didn't know if Okinda was going to get Holiday's attention. He had the stop sign up for him, but he looked like he was convinced and wanted to come on home, but he would have been running into an out. Two out base hits. That pitch taken down and in by Peralta. So a double for Matt Adams. Runners at second and third for Peralta, who was called out on strikes. Cardinals have picked up a home run from Peter Borges. And Matt Carpenter scored a run. As Peralta hits it down the left field line. Home run distance, but yanked it foul into the Cardinals bullpen. Boy, did he turn on that pitch. Yes, he did. He's had a good uh, road trip. Eight for 19 and a home run. Five game hitting streak. Leads the ball club in home runs. Got off to that slow start, but. One and two the count. Outfield very deep. This uh, inning was extended. Base hit by Holiday. Looked to be off the end of the bat. Upton. May have gotten a poor read on it, but it dropped in for a hit. Then the double by Adams. And a 1-2. Peralta stays alive and nearly catches the man on deck, Randall Gritchick. See a lot of clubs trying to work in on Peralta and see where Gritchick is. And the ball was just a couple of feet to his left, right? Yes, it was. Wainwright started this inning with his 31st career extra base hit. And Peralta strikes out for the second time tonight. The Cardinals strand two, but they add to their lead. Two nothing midway through three. And select Buffalo Wild Wings, the official Bud Light draft day parties. 
players, cheerleaders, Rampage will be there for details. Head to stlouisrams.com slash draft day. Good luck to the Rams. That'll be a pick that everyone will agree with. Good luck on that. Yeah. <laughs> no chance, right? No chance. <laughs> The Major League Baseball draft is about uh, a month or so away. Here is the switch hitting Romero Pena. Breaking ball hey. drops in for his strike, nothing in two. Pena, the ninth place hitter. And then you have the top of the uh, lineup with Hayward and Upton. Curveball pounded in the dirt and foul. I'm sure it wasn't easy for either of these managers to take over for Tony La Russa in Mike Matheny's case. Bobby Cox for Freddie Gonzalez. Legends of the game. Hall of Famers. Freddie now in his fourth season. Mike is in his third. Remember, Freddie worked for Bobby Cox. Was on his staff before he went down to, to Miami to manage there, and, and I think in a lot of ways, I talked to Bobby Cox. In a lot of ways, I think he was Bobby's personal choice. But I asked Bobby, "Were you going to be part of the decision making?" He said, "Absolutely not." Lion shot, but right at Peralta. And part of his reasoning, which tells you something about the man himself, is he said, hey, I'm going to be around the ball club, but I'm not working. And, you know, he's going to have to work with Frank Wren and Sherholtz and everything, general manager and president. It's their decision. It shouldn't be mine at all. If they ask my input, I'll probably even try to temper that. But he knew that he, he really was rooting for Freddie Gonzalez. Tony LaRusse has made it a point as... Hayward looks at strike one to make a conscious effort, especially initially not to be around the club as much as maybe he would have liked. You know, all managers get a big kick out of seeing one of their former players become a manager. And, and they, you know, rightfully so, I think they think that's part of the, their pedigree. So, you know, he was uh, very happy with the selection of Mike Matheny. Here's a 1-1. Hayward, a couple of hops to second from the outfield grass. It's Mark Ellis. Two away. Our buddy Kenny Reach wants to pass along a little big uh, Rich Hart. Big Rich Hart became a grandpa Saturday. A little E.J. Hart was born. So, it's a shout out to Eric and Ashley. Ashley's dad is the A.D. at Linderwood College. Your alma mater. Boy, is that campus, you know, shot up, and is that gorgeous there? Done a great job with it. I know the Brocks are very involved, and I believe on the Board of Trustees. Lou Brock Scholarship Fund. Lou has helped, uh, and Jackie, a number of kids go to school that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity. That's it out of play. My point with LaRusso was the fact that he stayed away so that Mike didn't feel that he was being overshadowed by the big presence that Tony could be and didn't have to look over his shoulder. And I'm sure that Mike did appreciate that. Nothing oh. to the count here on Upton. Took a hanging curveball back in the first and doubled with the only hit tonight for the Atlanta Braves. Brave C. Wainwright, boy, they've got to be kicking themselves. The kind of career that Adam has put together with the St. Louis Cardinals. Closing out a World Series, near Cy Young Award, 20 game winner. The complete games against them. Seeing him in postseason play all these years and really being one of the anchors of the staff along with Chris Carpenter. No doubt. I'm sure Holtz, you know, as I said, at that time they needed offense, and so they could afford to trade. He would, remember he was the minor league pitcher. The other guys were in the big leagues. 
There's a fly ball into right center. Borges on the move. Won't get it. Boy, did that ball carry. And Upton is flying around second. He'll stop there. It seemed like he reached out and was able to poke that all the way to the wall. It's very powerfully built. And when you look at this lineup, there's a few guys that give Adam a little trouble, but the one guy that you're surprised about is Justin Upton. He was old for 13 with four strikeouts, and that's just a you know, an excuse me swing, kind of a check swing there, and you saw how far it jumped off his back. Two hopping the wall in right center. And that wall is out there about 395. Here's Freddie Freeman, who signed an eight year, $135 million contract in February, and the Braves have locked up a number of their young players. Freddie was fifth in the MVP battling battle battle. Ballot. There you go. <laughs> Last year. See Freddie even in the heat of the summer months down south always wears sleeves. Mother passed away when he was 10 from melanoma. With skin cancer. And he's been a proponent of wearing those to protect his body from the sun. And was raised by his dad. He's the youngest of three from California. Remember for the longest time he had eye issues. He has tear duct issues in which his eyes they dry up all the time. And so they had him wearing goggles. And they thought it could be a severe problem but they found out it wasn't. Takes medicine for that. Was wearing goggles just last week and down here in Atlanta the pollen this time of year is just terrible. So he's been having issues with his vision here the last couple of weeks. This is a very, very bad location for anybody with uh, problems like that, science problems or anything, because it, it is notorious for allergies. Cutter misses outside, and it's three and one. Freddie has turned into a gold glove defender, MVP candidate, as you mentioned. And always a threat at the plate. And they swung on and missed. Good breaking ball there. 12 to 6 action. Freeman represents the tying run. Here in the home half of the third inning. This will be pitch number 50 for Adam Wainwright. Down the left field line, slicing Holiday over, won't get to it. Back to back doubles with two outs here in the third. The Braves get on the board and it's two to one. Freddie Freeman with RBI number 19. Left hand is going to slice away from Matt Holiday. Try to go in, the ball's away. And slicing away from him. Ball is carrying very well tonight. Here's Gaddis in a high pop up. Right center. Randall Grichik puts it away. Back to back doubles. Upton and Freeman. Braves on the board. It's 2 1.
Cardinals game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Live look-ins, instant replays, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and so much more. Download on the App Store or visit Cardinals.com today. Freddie Freeman, 19th RBI, cuts into the Cardinals' lead. It's 2-1. to one. Peter Borges is homered tonight. Matt Carpenter scoring on a double play ball off the bat of Yadier, Yadier Molina in the third. And it's a 2-1 game. Randall Gritchick, the start in right field tonight. There's a Vander Holyfield. He's a five-time heavyweight champ. And Evander is a frequent guest to Braves games. Calls Atlanta his home. Last fought, by the way, in 2011, if memory serves really? correct. And I also think, Al, that he is at least 50, maybe 51 years old. Great shape. We know that. Oh, man. I'm not sure Except if he would get uh, licensed anywhere to go compete in box. Check his ears. It's quite a night against Mike Tyson, wasn't it? His Mike was hungry. Fifth strikeout for Mike Miner. Vander Holyfield at the game tonight. Brings in Peter Borges, solo home run to left center, his first in the National League, and first as a Cardinal. Jimmy Carter used to come, President Carter, used to be frequent. Well, you played here. And, Ted Turner. Uh, I'm about to ask you, Ted Turner. Ted was one of a kind. Aye. Still is. I would think that uh, you two would get along. Similar interest, if you will, Al. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dan. <laughs> Ted Turner. Colorful. Colorful. Oh, yeah. Was Jane Fonda at the games, Al, when you were around? Nope, nope. They weren't married yet. Okay. There's Ted. He's on the far mouth left. of the south, and at one time, you know, he, he he believed he was the reincarnation of Rhett Butler, and I think at one time he really thought he was going to become president of the United States, in his mind at least. Creator of CNN, Ted Turner went to it was the old I, I can't remember it was the old Atlanta Country Club or something, but it was the facility. And took me on a tour of it and said, just think, there's going to be war in the Middle East. There's going to be a typhoon in, in Thailand. There's going to be some, an earthquake in South America. We're going to have something. We're going to have an earthquake in San Francisco. Hold that thought. Sounds very pleasant as Borges makes the turnaround first. Now, where are you going with this? And Go he ahead. said, and he said, and I'm going to show it all. So any world and, event, and Ted Turner's going to show it. And remember, this was, there was no satellite. There was no satellite uh, news at that time. And he was the first. And everybody said, you can't do that. And he goes, why? Well, it's never been done. He said, well, I'm going to do it. So he was a visionary. He was a visionary. And there's other things that he envisioned, too. One out and a runner at first is Peter Borges is two for two. This is Mark Ellis. He lined out to center and, and we talked to so many of the players. Now it's this group this generation of players that has come through. And we asked them uh, well who's your favorite player growing up and a lot of them will mention. Some of the, the players from the Atlanta Braves and TBS was on nationally. WGN had the Cubs so you had. The influence of Harry Carey and growth of the sport with the Chicago Cubs, but uh, all the great teams that they had here in Atlanta, always on TV. 
and it's also had a, a trickle-down effect to this organization. Now, obviously, they carry the games. It was in the television sets around here, but the winning the 14 consecutive years just brought about a boom of baseball players locally, and it's amazing the amount of players that have come from this area because of that great run of the Atlanta Braves. And we're benefiting from our tonight's starting pitcher, Adam Wainwright, but you're absolutely right. And you know, you had the two super stations. But GN was not as global as TBS, and and people think Ted came from a lot of money. Well, his fa his father had money at one time. It was in the outdoor advertising business, the billboard business, but he committed suicide when Ted was 21 years of age. And Ted was a little, he wasn't a very good student. He was kicked out of every school he went to. And and when he bought TBS, it was losing $50,000 a month. So it was you know, one of the independent stations, and and, uh, and he turned that around and then turned it into, you know, put it up on the satellite, and the rest is history. I mean, for me, growing up, it was... The occasional Cardinal game on television, and I mean occasional. But well, I every day there was, there was about what twenty game package, yeah. twenty five game package a year. But every day you turn on, you could see the Cubs of the Atlanta Braves. As Ellis pops it up, Freeman is over. You see him wearing goggles. Freeman does when he's on defense and takes him off at the plate. But that great run produced. You know, the Jeff Francours, the Haywards, the McCanns, Wainwrights, and the list goes on and on. And many of those players said to other teams, well, you can draft me. I'm not going to sign. But if the Braves drafted him, they were signing. Jeff Francours is a good example of that. By the way, is uh, in the minor leagues and actually pitched in a game two weeks ago and hit 93 on the gun. Always been uh, known for that big right arm he was a high school quarterback and they say one of the best ever to come out of this state line down the right field line and foul remember a couple years ago we had that conversation with some people down here and he's pretty well recognized as what they felt was the best athlete to come out of that whole group of uh, Georgia players they say that the kids around here, they can play baseball for basically 10 months out of the year. A couple of months, it's pretty chilly, too cold, but still can get out. And it has produced a lot of stars. Up and in, and it's two and two. Well, Peter Borges has two stolen bases, Al. Granted, not a lot of playing time, certainly lately, but I'd love to see him run. Well, this is what we're talking about, you know, is try and manufacture some runs, get some things going. Miner doesn't have that good a move. And a strikeout. It's six tonight for Mike Miner. Ellis didn't like this call. And just almost a perfect pitch. In steps Adam Wainwright, who doubled off the wall and left. One hop. 412 average now for Adam Wainwright. Adam does have six career home runs. And he singles up the middle, turning into one of the best hitters the Cardinals have as Borges is flying towards third. Ooh, if they would have waved him in, he may have scored. Very casual, getting the ball back in, and Borges hustling all the way. And at the last second, Jose Okendo held him up. You see Jose smiling just a bit. If they keep him going, I think he scores. I put my head down, but here's what you're talking about. Just lobs it back in there. You know, Jose Carpenter, you know, is a pretty good RBI man. That's even your, your lead up there. But watch Borges run. Go from first to third. You don't need a coach right now to get over to third base, but 
Kendo held him up last second. You're absolutely right. He he thought about it. It's one thing, you know, you can be batting sub 200, but you can always hustle. You can always get the ball back into the infield. Getting paid 15 million dollars, you think you can put a little more effort than the the Atlanta Braves center fielder. Reached on a bunt. Back in the third inning, just trying to advance Wainwright, who had doubled. A little hesitation from Mike Miner, turned into a base hit with his hustle. In. Two outs. <laughs> Nothing in two. That must not be picking up a lot of these fastballs because the Cardinals have taken a lot of fastball strikes. And Carpenter. Now, Carpenter, you're not so concerned about with him because he can be guessing or something, but in right in the starting blocks, and at least they're playing behind him with a left handed batter. Carpenter lines it into left in a base hit. Borges scores his second run of the night. The Cardinals back to a two run lead. An 0 2 pitch that. Obviously catches more of the plate and want to go up the ladder and it's up the ladder, but a good piece of hitting and what made that effective as he went with the pitch taking that to the opposite field try to pull it He would have popped it up by going to left field He gets the RBI and That's his 13th RBI So Wainwright standing at second base after career hit number 98. He's two for two base hit for Carpenter on base for the third time and Molina fouls the first pitch back. Bounced into a double play with the runners at the corners in the third. And was robbed by Justin Upton in left his first time up and he's 0 for two. Adam wins this game to be number 105 in his career with the Cardinals. That'll tie Mort Cooper for ninth on the Cardinals all time. Win list. He's already second in the all time strikeout list. Here's the 0 1. What was that something though? Watching it just catches your eye. Peter Borges going from first to third. My goodness. And that's why they're so excited to see him. That speed and the reputation of a defensive player. Hopefully we'll start seeing more of the offense, which you know, it's time to catch 22. You can't really help yourself offensively unless you play. Tough to get a rhythm, yep. timing. It really is, and Peters fought that, but you know, whether it's John Jay or somebody else, guys sitting there. A 2-1 pitch. Three and one. Looked like Molina was taking all the way. Sometimes you see him just standing there, and it doesn't look like he has any intention of. Sometimes as swinging a pitcher, the bat. Sometimes as a pitcher, you you'll be on the mound and you know the guy is taking, and you still can't throw a strike. Sure. A three-one pitch to Molina. Here it comes, and he draws a walk. Second walk issued by Miner. He's allowed eight base hits and asking for trouble here. Base is loaded. And the hitter will be Matt Holiday. Roger McDowell, pitching coach for Atlanta, has done a very good job down here not to talk to Miner. But, you know, Dan, walks are part of the equation. We're talking about manufacture some runs, get some hit and run, do different things to get things going. But, that's one of the ways the Cardinals can help their offense score some runs too. We don't walk enough. Well, Miner has six strikeouts, but a base hit by Borges. Base 0 2 mistake to Carpenter. The walk to Molina. And Holiday is one for two on the night. He struck out looking in the first and singled to center in the third. It's right. nice to see this lineup turn over too. Damn. That is not with his teammates, says he's doing a good job of hitting with runners in scoring position. 4 12. That's third best in the National League. Base is loaded, and the first pitch is taken for a ball. 
This is uh, one of those times that you may look back and say this is a huge key at bat in this game right here. Base is loaded your big slugger at the plate. And Matt Holiday. The 1 0. And Holiday didn't like that. He was backing up, thought that was high. Having words with our home plate umpire. One ball and one strike. Holiday taps it up the third base line and foul. Cardinals with these eight hits already in this game, a bit surprising. Mentioned that the Cardinals against left handed pitching this year came into action today batting 199. Only one player, Yadier Molina, was hitting above 250. And the Cardinals, again, it's worth repeating. Came in hitting 199 against left handed pitching. Here's a 1 2. Holiday fists it out to left. That'll drop. It's a base hit. Wainwright scores. Here comes another run. That's Carpenter. And on a 1 2 pitch, Holiday picks up a pair of RBIs. And the Cardinals have their ninth hit of the day and a lead of 5 to 1. Two more RBIs. Holiday leads with 21 in the ball club. That breaking ball, you see, just gets inside, doesn't hit it with authority, but lobs it over the head of the infielders, and the Cardinals are having a little bit of fun. Holiday, who is two for three tonight, he came in batting just 136 against left-handed pitching. Now Adams. Adams doubled down the right field line, left stranded into third, called out on strikes in the first, and the Braves have activity in the pen. Adams hits it up the middle, taken by Simmons. He'll step on the bag. Cardinals pick up three, and they lead it five to one. A nine hit attack through four. Of the run scored and at third base defensively still getting his timing down. We talked about the timing of the offense. Carpenter has committed six errors this season at third and Mike Matheny addressed that before the game didn't he Jim Ames? Yeah Mike was saying that uh, Carpenter just isn't comfortable at third base yet. He says Matt's timing is off. Matheny says even though third base is Matt's natural position he thinks Carpenter basically learning second base from scratch last year and becoming in Mike's words gold glove caliber defensively there has kind of put Carpenter behind the curve at third this year. He says the timing is so much different between those two positions and Dan it sounds cliche but it's true nobody is going to outwork Matt Carpenter 
He's out there early taking ground balls at third base almost every day as, as you know. It's a third baseman here Chris Johnson and uh, Jim. It's also a situation you're at second base. He's talked about talking about Matt Carpenter. He's talked to both of us about understanding the situation when you're at second kind of hopping around the bag depending on the count the pitch that's coming and not to say that you're stationary at third but as he's told us Jim it's something that he's had to really get back focused on. Yeah he said third base is reactionary it's a lot quicker the balls are hit there second base you have to know where to be on various different plays he said he almost feels somewhat isolated at third base after being at second base last year because you're constantly moving you're talking to the pitcher about where to be and so that's another adjustment but uh, you know he's a good defensive player and uh, and the Cardinals believe that will show through at third base too. All right Jimmy thanks and here's a 1 1 pitch to Chris Johnson fooled by that pitch he fly to center field first time up. Think about this too Dan when you're out at second base in the middle of the diamond you can look in and see the pitches. You know what's coming you can tell whether it's a fastball or breaking ball. You kind of get that feel and you start moving one direction or, or another. But when you're over at third base you can't see the signals. So you, there's another thing where you kind of feel like you're not involved like you were and, and then it's reactionary. You've got time for one step and a dive. It's all the time you've got over at third base where it, at second as you're saying you're kind of moving with the pitch being made going laterally and you got time to react to things. So I, I, th I thought early in the season he was playing really good defense. So I think this is something that's just uh, it'll work its way out very quickly. Here's a 2 2 pitch to Johnson. The curveball and that swung on and missed and a strikeout. The second of the night for Adam Wainwright. So Johnson 0 for 2. Speaking of Matt Carpenter, his bat is coming out. The bat day. Cardinals.com slash promotions. It's presented by Rawlings. It's a 28-inch bat. It's a big promotional weekend when we see the Braves starting a week from Friday. There's a broken bat lifted down the right field line, and it drops in for a hit. Upton is thinking to the throw. Not in time. B.J. Upton. Well, he has tremendous speed and earlier this year he got his 1,000th hit but he's like a, a 2020 guy should hit 20 home runs and should have at least 20 stolen bases and shatters the bat just well placed and Richard got to that ball got it in quickly but the speed of BJ up and gets in the scoring position talking about Sunday look what Stevie Cohen sent me you know Stevie Cohen who thinks he's the MVP of the fantasy camp works at Rawlings. works at Rawlings and apparently on Sunday Mother's Day he sent me a baseball from Rawlings it's got pink stitches I think that assume that will be in play and use the pink bats now they're going to use pink stitches on the baseball also I think it's a part of Raising awareness for breast cancer research, too. Exactly. Has their emblem on the ball. Here's Simmons. Grounds towards short. Peralta up with it. Two outs. And it brings in uh, the pitcher, Mike Miner. 5 1 Cardinals. How about Adam Wainwright? He's two for two tonight. Wainwright with eight hits and 18 at bats this year. It's three more than any other pitcher. And if you go back to last year, he had a total of eight hits. Uh, he's changed his batting stance. You know, hold the hands real close to the breast, and then really has shortened up his stroke. And he, well, how about the oddity tonight? He's allowed four hits. They've all been doubles. Good curveball, and a strike to the pitcher, Mike Miner. Miner rolled one up the third base line. Took a very good play by Matt Carpenter to get him. That was back in the second inning. And the cutter, nothing in two. Well, Miner is, he was one for two. Base hit and a strikeout coming in here. And does have one home run in his career. And 
Adams not taking any chances here. Curveball cutter and now another curveball. And the 0-2 swung on and missed and a strikeout for Adam Wainwright. Two in the inning, three tonight. We're through four. Birds on top 5-1. Night for baseball. Along with the Mad Hungarian and Jim Hayes, I'm Dan McLaughlin. The Cardinals have a lead of five to one. Fox Sports supports proud to recognize the Army's Gold Star Pin Campaign, which honors the families of fallen service members. To learn more, visit goldstarpins.org. Johnny Peralta, Randall Grichik, and Peter Borges for St. Louis. Peralta 0 for 2, and he jumps on the first pitch. Upton over to get it. That goes to the wall. And Peralta digging for second base and a leadoff double, and that's hit number 10 tonight for the Cardinals. Four plus innings, 10 hits against the left handed pitcher. That's a week's work, but they're all having a lot of fun. Another man out in scoring position, and John Mabry is smiling today. Now it's Randall Grichik. Ball scoots away. Peralta on his way to third. So a chance for Randall Grichik now the fly ball to pick up his second big league RBI. Got that first one in Chicago. Where <laughs> I'm about to stab as he tried to smother the glove straight down on the ball when not the technique that we're accustomed to. Infield is drawn in. And it's one ball, one strike on Randall Grichik, who's now three for 19 with seven strikeouts in his big league career. One ball and two strikes.
Randall hit 22 home runs last year at Little Rock. Also picked up a gold glove in the minor leagues. And he was leading Memphis with 17 RBIs at the time of his uh, call up. Gets the fly ball. It's shallow. Hayward, a very good arm, makes the catch. Cut off by Freeman. Peralta stays put. Richick is hitless tonight. Well, Peter Borges is two for two with a home run, a single, an RBI, and two runs scored. Three things to know about Peter. Let's tell you about it. Dad has been a major league scout. A lot of time with the Padres. Most influential player in his career, he told me, is Torrey Hunter. And the way that he uses uh, the socks in his uniform, this is how he's always done it. Get the socks pulled up high. Been doing this since he was in Little League. Well, Peter came in against left handers one for 20. And now he's. In a home run, his first in the National League. He scored two runs here tonight. It's two for two. Borges trying to bunt his way on. One ball, one strike. We have seen Peter Borges in this ball game in particular. Very quick bat. Second inning. His first Cardinal home run. In the fourth, a base hit. We saw in spring training, you know, teams attacking with a breaking ball. And work that count till you get to war. It's more predictable that you see a fastball. What do you think about a squeeze play? Certainly with Borges at the plate. Peralta third. One. And Drop. Peter Borges three. Upton can't find it. He's digging for second. In there safely. Second RBI tonight for Peter Borges. Now up to five. It's a single and an error on Upton. And with that RBI, it makes it six to one. And Freddy Gonzalez will go to his bullpen. He comes in here and he gets too close to him, goes off the body, and he couldn't find it. it. Have a night, Peter Borges, rolling in the fifth. Three hits, 6 1. Up 66, eight gallons or more now until September 19th. Receive up to 50% off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home.
home game.